Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Danny Sittenham. I'm President and CEO of Helijet International, and welcome. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, in particular the Esquimalt and Songhees nations whose relationships with this land have existed since time immemorial. I'd like to also thank a few people that are here with us today. And everyone who's watching, thank you for arriving. And everyone who's online in Canada and abroad, thank you. In particular, I want to thank the Premier for his time off his busy schedule to join us today. I'd also like to welcome and say hello and excuse me if certain people are not here yet, but uh, Marianne Alto, the mayor of Victoria, was maybe showing up. I haven't seen her yet. Marge Gardner, city councillor for Victoria. Thank you, Marge. The leadership of the Greater Victoria Harbour Authority. Thank you. Paul Nursey, destination Greater Victoria. And Darlene Holstein and Bruce Williams from the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. If I've missed anyone, I apologize. So Helijet started about 37 years ago. We had one helicopter, 12 people on the payroll, and we started service between Vancouver and Victoria. I would say we were disrupting aviation 37 years ago when we started the first scheduled helicopter airline. Over the past 37 years, we've grown to become North America's largest scheduled helicopter airline. And I have to thank the 170 professionals that work at Helijet for making that happen every day. We've opened up heliports in Victoria, Vancouver, and Nanaimo. We've become the largest provider of dedicated medical air transport for British Columbia. We've expanded our charter services to Seattle, and the Pacific Northwest. We're operating fixed wing as well as helicopters. And today marks another equally significant milestone. Not just for us, but for all British Columbians. As industries and nations around the world work to transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, one of the most dynamic sectors in the forefront is the aerospace and aviation industry. It's an exciting time for aviation right now. And make no mistake, Helijet. And I'm doing that on purpose, Danny. Right. I'll have to call Greg. <laughs> we want to be in the forefront of this. We see the opportunities with electric, electric and hydrogen powered vehicles in the near future. Today I'm pleased to announce that Helijet will be on its way to becoming the first Canadian air carrier to provide passengers and cargo services using electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Acronym is eVTOL, you'll hear that quite a few times. Following the placement of firm orders with the Alia 250 eVTOL aircraft from Beta Technologies. Our plan is to integrate this five passenger one pilot aircraft into our existing network of helicopter services to provide quieter, lower cost, sustainable air transportation for travelers in southwestern BC and the Pacific Northwest. As travelers increasingly look to destinations and transportation options that reflect their own commitments to environmental responsibility, we believe EV tall service in the region will positively benefit local businesses, our tourism sector, which is represented here today by Destination Greater Victoria and the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. I should also note the benefits provided by the Beta eVTOL will extend beyond passenger services. The ALIA's vertical takeoff and landing capability will also have tremendous potential to enhance Helijet's provision of emergency response, air ambulance, and organ transfer services in the Lower Mainland. Today we move organs by helicopter between hospital to hospital. We move radioisotope tracers by helicopter between Vancouver and Victoria, Vancouver and Kelowna. A very expensive proposition, but a necessary one. One day soon, 
will be able to lift off from the top of Vancouver General where the isotopes are built and go right to Royal Jubilee and drop them off at a much lower cost with no carbon footprint at a quieter environment for the people below. On behalf of Helijet, I want to say how proud I am to work with Beta. I'm going to bring Sky up here in a moment. Our partnership with them is a reflection of our commitment to introducing and integrating zero emission vertical lift technologies and related ground building infrastructure in the communities we serve. That will include transforming our current heliport infrastructure to meet future urban mobility vertiport infrastructure and needs. By any measure, these are exciting times. There's plenty of work ahead of us. Here to tell you a little bit more about the vehicle itself, I'd like to introduce Mr. Sky Karapchen, Sales Director for Beta. Thank you, Danny. First, I just want to start by thanking everyone for being here today and, and uh, thank you, thanks for uh, allowing us to be part of this historic event. A big thank you, of course, to our new partners at Helijet, our very first customer in Canada, and we couldn't be more thrilled. Danny, it has been a pleasure to work with you and your team, and we look forward to uh, all the places that this relationship is going to take us. Thank you to Premier Eby for your support in this new form of greener aviation and your sustainability initiatives more broadly. Thank you to J.R. Hammond and the whole team at CAM for your support and the facilitation of the growth of advanced air mobility in Canada. We're excited to be a growing part of that mission. We started Beta a little over six years ago with a mission to do our part to help turn the corner on climate change. For us, that meant decarbonizing aviation. We found resonance with that mission in Canada, from the Clean BC Roadmap to 2030 to Premier EB's 300 million conservation fund. In addition to its net zero emissions, the electric, simple design of our aircraft also offers more reliability and lower costs. Between the fractional cost of electricity compared to fuel and the reduced maintenance of the electric design, our Alia aircraft wants to work, creating more opportunities for Helijet to use it. We are very excited to work with Helijet to bring this new technology to British Columbia so that they can continue to serve their outstanding customer base with this aircraft that is green and zero emission. Last year, Beta opened doors to an office in Montreal, that being our first touch point to Canada. Now we have our first customer in the country. We can't wait to continue this path of growth here in Canada through our team, our customers, and government relationships. Today signifies a, a meaningful, truly meaningful step toward a sustainable aviation future for all of us. We are thrilled to have our first partner in Canada, and we are humbled that Helijet, one of the foremost operators in the country, has selected us as that partner. We're dedicated to working hand-in-hand -hand with the Helijet team to ensure the successful integration of our EV toll into their network, and more macro sense that we can come together to assure the safety, reliability, and sustainability of the future of connecting communities. Thank you. Thank you, Sky. For Helijet, the purchase of the Beta VTOL aircraft is just the latest demonstration in a commitment to advanced air mobility. In 2019, Helijet became a founding member of the Canadian Advanced Air Mobility, the national organization for advanced air mobility in Canada. In short, CAM has created an impressive international ecosystem of more than 100 members from industry, academia, capital, and government. Here to tell us more about CAM and provide a perspective in today's news is CAM's Executive Director, Mr. J.R. Hammond. Wonderful. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is J.R. Hammond. I'm privileged to serve as the Executive Director for CAM, the Canadian National Association for Advanced Air Mobility. We are co-founded with the National Research Council of Canada and uphold the federal mandate to expedite Canada's transition towards zero emission aviation through advanced air mobility by 2050. Today, I stand before you with immense pride, inspiration, and excitement as we celebrate a monumental leap forward in the world of advanced air mobility. 
But first, I must begin with expressing some of the gratitude to where we've gotten through today. To begin with, I'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks to our founding member of CAM, the visionary leader and CEO, Danny Sitnam, and the HeliJet team. Danny, you and HeliJet have embodied the vision and excitement of CAM through your unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of sustainability and aviation daily, which has allowed us to be where we are today. I also want to express our uh, sincere thanks to Premier David Eby and the entire and the various ministries, specifically the team at the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, who have had their work as the cornerstones of our development across the nation. And let us not forget the team at Beta Technologies. Sky, on behalf of the entire CAM ecosystem across the country, welcome to Canada. Beta's pioneering spirit and innovation have ignited the transformative change in aviation and the landscape that we need for our national first ALEA 250 purchase order in partnership with HeliJet. Now, five years ago, we embarked on a journey in launching CAM with a vision to bring advanced air mobility and zero emission aviation to Canada. Over these five years, we've created an ecosystem spanning all three levels of government, industry, academia, and capital, both nationwide and growing in international collaboration. This journey has put British Columbia and Canada on the map globally for our thought leadership and unified voice towards these social, economic, and environmental pillars we demand as a part of our advanced air mobility future. Thanks to this announcement from HeliJet, as a province, nation, and ecosystem, we have moved from speaking about advanced air mobility to witnessing its commitment to tangible operations in Canada. Danny, you and the entire team at HeliJet have done it. You've become the first Canadian company to commit to electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft into your existing network of services, making advanced air mobility a reality in British Columbia and Canada. This commitment, though, goes far beyond the audience present with us here today. It's a beacon of inspiration for our ecosystem across British Columbia and for all of us across Canada. This announcement is a testament to the achievements possible when we harness the unified national voice of CAMS ecosystem and unite our commitment towards the advanced air mobility future we all deserve. Our momentum for advanced air mobility operations in Canada continues to grow. From the Federal Government of Canada's $350 million commitment to sustainable aviation projects through the INSAT program, to the launching of Transport Canada's Advanced Air Mobility Integration Team, CAM continues to drive the funding and regulatory developments towards our commercial operations. HeliJet continues to be the most unique operator globally to benefit from AAM technology. This is due to their geographic operations in the Pacific Northwest, its commitment to emergency service missions, and decades of passenger demand data. These are the key ingredients that we've identified at CAM to be essential not only for launching advanced air mobility operations, but integrating within the existing commercial aviation marketplace. This journey is still beginning. We still have immense work ahead. And I stand here today with confidence and now proof that we have an ecosystem of talent, resources, and vision willing and ready to bring AAM to operation in Canada. We will soon gather again to celebrate the inaugural commercial flight of the ALEA 250 eVTOL aircraft with HeliJet. And that day will mark another historic milestone in our journey towards an interconnected aviation ecosystem. Danny, we launched CAM with the motivation of finding ways to sustainably bring the world together better. And now we will celebrate the journey knowing that we are one step further in turning that mission into a reality. Thank you to everyone present here and online for sharing in this incredible moment. And we look forward to the exciting, challenging, and hard work remaining in the journey together ahead. Thank you. Thank you, JR. I uh, would like to just uh, acknowledge both ministers here, Minister Bailey and um, Minister Lohr. Thank you for joining us today.
get through my notes here. So, of course, as JR noted, developing and thriving air mobility sector requires the ongoing collaboration of many partners, partners who share a commitment to advancing technology and aviation in ways that support environmental responsibility and help address the challenges of climate change. When it comes to government partners, Helijet is honored to have an excellent working relationship with the City of Victoria and the Mayor. For our industry and for our province, today's announcement is all about innovation and the future. We are grateful to also have the support and encouragement from the province of British Columbia and in particular, Premier David Eaton. Please join me in welcoming the Premier. Thanks so much, uh, Danny. It's, a, it's an honor to be here uh, with you today and this really exciting announcement for British Columbia. is such a proud moment for us and, and actually for all of Canada, uh, the leadership you're showing here. Um, it is, uh, it's a big day today, not because it's Halloween, uh, because uh, what uh, Danny and the team at, at Helijet are doing here uh, is the level of innovation and response to the challenges around climate change uh, that our province is known for and rightly so. Uh, British Columbia, it's a, we're, a, we're a quiet champion when it comes to the aerospace industry. A lot of people don't know. Uh, one of Kelowna's biggest employers, KF Aerospace, uh, is uh, obviously uh, in, in the industry. We also have Cascade Aerospace out in Abbotsford, uh, the biggest employer in the valley. Uh, we have companies like Indro Robotics, and the CEO is here today uh, using large drones uh, to deliver to remote and rural First Nations communities out of Vancouver and recognize the work that's done there. Uh, we are leaders in aerospace, we're leaders in innovation, and uh, what you heard from Danny today is that he is keeping British Columbia at the forefront of innovation, reducing pollution, showing the way forward, and uh, doing it in a way that is cost-effective and provides even better benefits for the public through medical deliveries and transportation. It's so exciting. I want to thank you, Danny. I want to thank everybody at Helijet uh, for your leadership on this. Uh, it makes us all so proud. Um, I want to thank everybody at Helijet who had a role in this. I want to thank CAM uh, for being a champion uh, of this at an organizational level, at the national level around regulations to make sure that this works. It's a highly regulated industry and we want it to work right and CAM's there working with the federal government on that. And in particular, I want to thank uh, Beta for coming up here, for partnering with Helijet on this and for eventually, I'm sure, uh, relocating their head office and manufacturing facilities to British Columbia to be as close as possible to their customers. Uh, look, we're, uh, we're really proud of where we are in British Columbia on this, and, uh, and today is a, is a great day to join this announcement. It's an honor for me to be here with you today. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Helijet. And, uh, and let's get going on this. I can't wait to ride in one of these things. Right on. Excellent. Thank you, Premier, Sky, and JR. Thank you all for joining us today. It's a, it's a privilege to uh, make this announcement with all of you. In addition to all of you, we have hundreds of additional guests that have joined us online for this special moment, including media from across North America. And I would like to invite Premier Abe back to the podium just for a few questions, starting with BC Media. Thanks for joining us. We're going to gather first for a photo. Um, there's going to be a model that's going to be brought outside, and we're, going to, we're all going to okay, gather great. around for a photo. And then we're going to do some questions directly following that. Thank you. There it is. I see the model. Then what's the leg room? The leg room. Okay. Well, you should meet the president of Beta. He's 6'6". Six, six. Oh, there you go. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have members of the media here in person as well as those on the phone line. Those on the phone line are reminded to press star one to enter the queue. Just a little heads up then, about 10 minutes we have an aircraft that will be landing. We'll take a slight pause to allow that to happen and then we'll continue on afterwards. Our first question coming from Richard Zisman in Global News. Go ahead, Richard. 
Uh, Premier BC United announced uh, earlier today plans to get rid of the gas tax, the provincial end of it, uh, if elected in the next provincial election. Also get rid of the carbon uh, tax on home heating. Are these ideas that you would be interested in implementing to provide some affordability to British Columbians? Well, I, uh, I certainly uh, heard the announcement uh, from BC United, uh, their intention to, um, to get rid of the carbon tax uh, entirely uh, if the federal government uh, isn't there. Uh, and also, uh, if they were in government to, um, uh, to spend $5 billion on their initiatives. Um, I, uh, the, the obvious question for me is, where is that money going to come from? Uh, what uh, schools, teachers, hospitals, healthcare workers, uh, are they going to get rid of to pay for this commitment to British Columbians? Uh, they are well aware uh, that there's not $5 billion lying around the couch uh, in the province of British Columbia. Uh, for our part, our commitment to British Columbians around the carbon tax is that uh, we're supporting people and we're taxing uh, polluting energy sources. So uh, we have doubled uh, the uh, uh, climate tax credit uh, to support uh, middle and lower income British Columbians with additional costs uh, that come with the carbon tax. And we're providing incentives so that they're able to switch from more polluting sources of energy to less polluting sources of energy. Uh, we've got an important role in pushing the federal government for fairness to ensure that British Columbians are treated the exact same way as uh, Atlantic Canadians when it comes to being able to switch at no cost to uh, heat pumps uh, and be able to save money on their heating as well as reduce pollution. Those are the decisions people want to make and we need the federal government to be there for British Columbians just like they are for people in Nova Scotia. Richard, do you have a follow-up question? The IIO uh, has determined that drunk tanks are outdated. Do you believe that uh, we should move away from that idea of somebody going into a cell to cool off after having too much to drink and instead uh, move them to a health facility to get treatment that they may need? Well, the, uh, the concern that we have about people's safety, especially with the toxic drug crisis that we're in where people may be both using alcohol as well as opioids or other drugs, uh, is, uh, is that they're able to survive uh, the night uh, when they're too intoxicated to take care of themselves. It's one of the reasons why we uh, have dedicated a significant amount of money uh, for a new detox facility uh, in Vancouver uh, uh, that will be medically supervised uh, so that people are able to, uh, to detox, uh, that they're able to uh, recover from intoxication uh, in a safe environment. Uh, asking police uh, to take this on rather than health professionals uh, is a challenge for police. It's, uh, it's not their best use when you police out there fighting crime. Uh, but uh, certainly there are issues of, uh, of uh, people when they're detoxing who become violent, so security is necessary, but generally speaking, there's a medical issue, not a policing issue, which is why we're taking this approach in Vancouver and, and across the province, we support that approach. Our next question, we're gonna go to the phone line with Rob Buffum from CTV News. Go ahead, Rob. Hi, Premier. I just wanted to follow up in relation to the carbon taxes and get your position specifically on whether it's out of the question that there might be some kind of um, pause put on home heating for people in B.C. Other provinces, as you know, including Saskatchewan, are um, coming back to the federal government. I know B.C. sets its own carbon taxes, but would you consider giving British Columbians a break on their heating costs? Yeah, we, uh, thanks Rob. Uh, we know a lot of British Columbians are struggling right now with the costs of just about everything. Uh, global inflation hasn't left British Columbia untouched. Uh, and so for those families that are struggling, we've doubled uh, the, the climate tax credit uh, so that they have access to additional money. Uh, we uh, sent out additional uh, money to people uh, through the, this climate tax credit, uh, recognizing that they were seeing higher costs. Uh, it was something that, uh, unfortunately, the opposition voted against. Uh, but we believe that people need that support right now. Uh, so we're going to continue to find ways to support people with uh, the cost that they're facing. Um, but what we're not going to do is what you're seeing the federal government do and what you're seeing uh, the opposition do, which is protect certain types of heat sources. The federal government wants to protect home heating oil for some reason. Uh, BC United wants to protect fossil fuel heating sources. We want to protect people from increased costs, uh, support them with those costs, and support them in switching to cleaner source of energy. You know, I'm here at an announcement today that is about the future of British Columbia, which is zero carbon. Um, and it's, uh, it's not just about uh, transportation. Uh, it's about uh, home heating. Uh, it's about uh, agriculture. 
It's about uh, innovation and the future of our economy. We need to be looking forwards, uh, supporting people through this challenging transition away from fossil fuels uh, and helping them reduce their heating costs in the process. That's what the heat pump program is all about. Well. Um, yeah, looking forward, uh, Pierre Polyev has said if he does um, win the next federal election, he'll eliminate the carbon tax. As you referenced earlier in this presser, Mr. Falcon has said that he would do the same if indeed the Conservatives are in power federally. What would you do if the other provinces and territories had scrapped the carbon tax if we saw a Conservative federal government? Would you keep it in BC or would you also scrap it? Okay, don't take my words for it. Uh, take the words of uh, Kevin Falcon uh, circa uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> the, the carbon tax is the most efficient and effective way to encourage companies and individuals to switch from more polluting sources of energy to clean energy sources. And uh, we know we have to support people through that transition. We're going to do that. Uh, when Kevin Falcon uh, brought in the carbon tax, he said that it was one of his proudest moments in government uh, because he did something that was hard, uh, but it was important to do. Well, I understand the theme of the last uh, week and a half has been uh, Liberal leaders f facing pressure in the polls, uh, flip-flopping on their position on the carbon tax. Now, uh, Mr. Falcon wants to take us backwards. Uh, British Columbia will remain a climate leader under the NDP, and we'll be supporting people just like we have. We've reduced taxes for the average family. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're earning $80,000 or less, uh, by about 40%. We got rid of the tolls on the bridges. We reduced ICBC costs by $400 a year. We're going to keep supporting families and we're going to enable announcements like today's at Helijet moving towards the innovative, low carbon future that everybody deserves. And there are communities like Prince George that are on the front lines of this. Uh, there was a CEO of a major international mining company flew into Prince George about a multi billion dollar hydrogen plant in that resource dependent community. In Prince George, on the site of an existing oil refinery, Canada's first biodiesel refinery. This is where we're going. This is the future, and I don't believe that British Columbians want to go backwards on this, but we know they do need support, and we're going to provide it. In perfect timing, Premier, the, the aircraft is just about to land, so we're going to take a pause. We'll continue our event afterwards. Thanks okay, so much for thanks. joining us. Uh, Premier, I would like to hear you about, uh, again with the carbon tax, sorry, um, would you consider uh, stopping the, the raise of the carbon tax uh, for like a few months or a few years? The, the challenge with uh, the, uh, the BC United announcement is that uh, getting rid of the carbon tax, you don't, uh, don't take my words for this, these are the words of Kevin Falcon, the same leader that made this announcement will result in double-digit tax increases for individuals and for businesses in our province. Uh, the, uh, the question is, um, you know, is he going to be raising uh, taxes on individuals to pay for this commitment? Is he going to be cutting services? Uh, these are the details that he leaves out. We have a very clear plan about uh, how we maintain a leadership role in British Columbia on climate while supporting people. Every uh, change in the carbon tax increases the amount that British Columbians get to the point at 2030 they actually receive more from car carbon tax rebates than they put in through the carbon tax system. And so it's a very deliberate design uh, to make sure that British Columbians are supported through this process 
and that it encourages both businesses and individuals to make large, low carbon choices like we're seeing today at Helijet. I think it's a huge mistake to abandon that, those principles of supporting people while we get rid of uh, high carbon intensity fuels. And Amelia, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, can I get your thoughts on uh, uh, um, the carbon tax, but uh, revenue neutral? Yeah, the, the carbon tax, when it was introduced uh, by the BC Liberals under uh, uh, Kevin Falcon was a cabinet minister at the time. It was not revenue neutral then. Uh, and the carbon tax today, what we've done is we've dedicated uh, some revenues from the carbon tax to go directly to people to support them when they're struggling with costs. We've taken uh, other components of the carbon tax uh, revenue to support individuals and businesses in moving to low carbon solutions. So for individuals, insulation, windows and doors, uh, incentives for installing heat pumps, which uh, we expect the federal government to match the same way they did in Atlantic Canada. Uh, for businesses uh, moving to electrification, uh, we uh, have a lot more work to do on this front. Uh, but the carbon tax revenues are about supporting individuals and businesses in this important transition that our province has to make. Uh, and we believe that that is the best way uh, to do it. Uh, and, uh, and I don't understand uh, why the leaders of the leader of the BC Liberal United Party uh, would be abandoning uh, that at this point in time, especially after the summer we had, uh, the wildfires we saw, the drought, the impacts on British Columbians to abandon our climate leadership position now. Uh, is uh, and spend $5 billion doing it without any explanation of how to pay for it, that's not leadership. We have one more question. This is from Jay Romp from Victoria News. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, Premier, just on zero carbon transportation, I know BC Ferries has recently said that it's going to have to delay its island class uh, battery powered ferries because uh, in part blaming a lack of funding from the province. I guess just how can or why isn't there the funding for that kind of low carbon travel? Yeah, we're, uh, we're working closely with BC Ferries to be able to hit uh, not just carbon targets, uh, but also uh, customer service targets uh, and pricing targets for British Columbians. Uh, we, uh, 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 there's an issue around uh, uh, charging capacity uh, at, uh, at uh, BC Ferries terminals uh, that we're working on with BC Ferries. Uh, but BC Ferries uh, does have the ability to, uh, and we're encouraging them to be, a climate leader in the marine space using uh, homegrown uh, hybrid uh, battery products that are available from a firm in Richmond. Uh, it's very exciting stuff and uh, it's another example of uh, leadership in the transportation sector and we'll keep supporting BC Ferries um, because they certainly need it in delivering for British Columbians right now. And that's all the time we have for media questions. I'm going to turn things over to JR for some more technical questions. Excellent. So we're now going to go to some of our online questions as well for our attendees here. We please, when you have the opportunity to submit a question, please state your name, where you're from, and who you're directing the question to, to Danny, Sky, or Premier EB, and as well as the CAM organization as well. So we're going to begin with uh, Danny. If you want to come up to the podium, please. Can you just give us some insight of how do you envision the integration of the ALEA 250 eVTOL aircraft into HeliJet's existing operations and where you see the opportunities for expansion with this new aircraft? Yeah, thanks, JR. So uh, we've been modeling uh, the aircraft and the technology on how it will integrate into Helijet's existing system. Right now, if you can imagine uh, Vancouver, Victoria being a, a, a main corridor using these uh, Sikorsky S-76 helicopters, I mean, the helicopter is not going to go away tomorrow, so we'll be operating helicopters for quite some time. But what this eVTOL, and specifically the Beta Alia, can do is feed in and out of these heliports from established vertiports in the outer suburbia areas. So at a lower cost, at a lower noise profile, okay, and zero carbon footprints, we can move now potentially from suburbias on Vancouver, such as Langley, Pitt Meadows, Abbotsford, and people can travel to and from the heliport in Vancouver. So imagine a hub and spoke idea very similar to how an airline operates on main hubs. And these aircraft would be moving to and from Vancouver. In Victoria, they could be moving from uh, Up Island and so forth, Port Alberni and so forth, and feeding passengers and cargo to and from the Victoria heliport destined, say, to Vancouver, one day into Seattle and otherwise. So we see that integration being more of a hub-and-spoke concept where the aircraft can operate in there. 
Wonderful. Thanks so much, Janet. We're going to pass it on to Premier Eby now. Two-part question here, Premier Eby. The first one is, can you explain upon the opportunities ahead with aerospace in British Columbia, both the manufacturing side and creating stronger connection to some of our remote communities with new technologies like this with Beta and HeliJet? Yeah, we're, um, thanks. That's a great question. We're, we're such an amazing province. It's a beautiful place. That's why we choose to live here. It's uh, wild spaces, mountains, water. Uh, it's incredibly challenging uh, to get around to, especially the more rural and remote areas of our province. And there are goods and individuals that have to travel in a hurry. People in medical emergency, uh, medical supplies. Uh, you heard about uh, radioisotopes uh, for treatment. Um, even uh, in some communities, just basic uh, groceries uh, and supplies necessary for daily life. Uh, because of the cost of fuel, because of the cost of fuel, uh, plus uh, uh, the uh, equipment maintenance of uh, traditional internal combustion engine, uh, it's very expensive to move these things around our province. Um, because uh, electric vehicles bring those costs down, because they make it more significantly more affordable, um, because some of these technologies, as Indra Robotics has shown, uh, for smaller uh, loads don't require uh, pilots, can be done by uh, drone delivery. Uh, the possibility here of really opening up uh, the province and improving the quality of life in rural communities and remote communities, especially in First Nations communities across the province, is really significant. That, that's just the geographic reality of British Columbia and the technology. The real opportunity here for our province is to be a leader in the technology space. You know, I, I made a bit of a lighthearted uh, pitch to Beta about locating here, but it's not a coincidence that the first uh, commercial passenger airline to make an e, uh, EV toll uh, order uh, is here in British Columbia. That's, that's not a coincidence uh, because uh, we have uh, put in place the, the conditions necessary to support these kinds of business decisions, the certainty to enable businesses to make the decisions to invest in the future here. Uh, and we hope and we are seeing that that is attracting uh, businesses here that service that need. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, a major hybrid battery producer for the marine industry located in Richmond. Uh, we are a leader in hydrogen in Burnaby. Uh, we are a leader in aerospace uh, right now uh, with major firms uh, doing work uh, on, uh, on planes that are in service around the world. So it's, uh, it's a very exciting time to be in British Columbia. Uh, we're leading in this space, and we're an attractive place to do business, and, uh, and we're going to uh, not just benefit from this technology from the point of view of improved quality of life, but also economically as the jobs and companies move here to be on the cutting edge with us. Wonderful. And then the follow-up on that, Premier Eby, if you have uh, one moment as well, do, is yeah. the importance of the transportation funding, but also some of the infrastructure side. Can you give insight how those two need to play a role, especially when we look at our heliports here and the future Verdi ports that are going to be required for these new electric aircraft too. The, uh, when we're talking about, uh, about um, uh, facilities for aircraft, uh, this is a heavily regulated sector. It's complex to comply with the federal rules that, uh, that govern this sector, uh, which is why it's so important for the provincial government to play a leadership role in supporting uh, companies that are interested in working in this space. Um, one of those companies, uh, YVR, uh, we don't often think about as a as a company, but it is. Uh, it's one of our major employers in Lower Mainland, with about 26,000 employees on that site. Uh, they uh, play a coordinating role with airports around uh, British Columbia uh, in showing leadership around things like sustainable aviation fuel, around uh, electrification of uh, their existing infrastructure, and future technologies uh, like EV toll. And so uh, the, the remarkable opportunity that we have here in British Columbia is the service providers, a committed provincial government, uh, committed private companies that are already using and ordering the technology, and a public that is fully supportive, well-trained and educated with hundreds of new tech spaces opening across the province. Uh, we've got the recipe here in British Columbia for success in this industry, and I'm really excited about it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thanks. Premier Evie. We'll have uh, Sky come up now from Beta Technologies. So, Sky, one of our questions uh, from online here is talking about the quietness of the aircraft. Can you give us some insight in comparison to a conventional helicopter? How is this new Alia 250 going to be in sound terms? Yep, sure, and I'll, I'll keep it really brief. Um, we are uh, about 10 times quieter than a traditional helicopter, ultimately. Yep. Thanks, Jay.
Wonderful. Uh, we, I guess we are now boarding uh, it's with. Quieter than the politicians. <laughs> we are now going to be boarding uh, with the premier on our helijet okay, aircraft great. here. So thank you all. We'll take a brief pause on the media, and we'll be back in about ten minutes. Great. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank you so much and welcome back to all of our online stream. We're going to conclude with a couple last questions to both Sky and Danny here. So Sky, coming from online as well, we're interested to hear some of the milestones that Beta's had in the United States and how that's going to help on both the aircraft certification and operations here on the Canadian side. Yeah, thanks JR. So we've been doing manned test flights uh, for over four years now on our aircraft, operating in the national airspace system in and out of small, medium and large airports. Uh, most recently, we flew down the East Coast from our headquarters in Burlington, Vermont, down to Florida for uh, delivery for the U.S. Air Force. Um, so we've had a lot of firsts in that time, uh, again, with our, our uh, test flight campaign over those years, namely uh, quality valve flights with uh, FAA, uh, U.S. Air Force, Army, and then uh, customer quality valve flights uh, recently with Bristow. And that translates, of course, to our work uh, in Canada as well, as, again, we've opened our office last year in Montreal and then most recently did our uh, first cross-border flight into Montreal um, uh, earlier this year. So certainly that's informed our process as we work through certification, and we look forward to uh, more milestones uh, south of the border and in Canada soon. Uh, and I think the importance of that too, just to build upon the Transport Canada's launch of their Advanced Air Mobility Integration Team, which CAM is going to play a critical role in helping build that pathway between the FAA and the United States, and the certification process in Transport Canada. This is the partnership that we're looking to expand upon, not only Helijet, but how that also lays the path for across the country. So thank you so thank much, you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Guy. And, and Danny, just to conclude us off here, uh, this is coming from Scott Simi as well. Can you tell us a little bit about how the aircraft will be flying both routine passenger flights and also how many of the eVTOL has been purchased uh, for the beta partnership? Thanks, JR. Um, I'll start with that uh, last question. So we've uh, made a firm order for four aircraft at this time with an option for four more. Um, where we see the aircraft also expanding uh, our envelope is in rural and remote areas. And we've said that uh, the urban operations is, is a key uh, opportunity for these vehicles. But in rural and remote, where air travel is not affordable for many, many British Columbians, that's where we see this, you can call it last mile opportunity, where uh, delivering uh, medical equipment, supplies, and many other products, the eVTOL can probably come in and make a difference in getting the cost down, not requiring a lot of infrastructure to get into these rural remotes. So we're working with uh, great alliance partners uh, like Helicopters Without Borders, a nonprofit, who's already doing it with First Nations Health Authority and a lot of indigenous communities in BC. And we see that opportunity for eVTOL in participating in those transfers. Wonderful. So we'd just like to conclude our formal media portion here for the online questions. The press releases have gone out via Beta, Helijet, and CAM's website with specific media packages and media contacts on there. We encourage any further questions that we didn't have a chance to speak of today to contact those media outlets there. And we look forward to the incredible amount of work ahead from the announcement today. So thank you everybody for attending online and for being present here. And we look forward to the conversations continuing. Thank you, JR. Thank you very much. Thank you.